taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Juan D. Osdegarello. The Secumindicus, the Fat Extractor. Juan D. Osdegarello, was born on October 17, 1821, into a large farming family. He was his parents' ninth child and the family were located in a small village named Egilas, in the Basque region of Spain. Due to the era, the location, and the occupation of his parents, Guerrero never received an education and was therefore illiterate. However, the farming had stood him in good stead and he was recognized as a hard worker. Once he had reached the fair age of 14, the first Carlist War was in motion and young Guerrero was sent to various other villages in the area to work as a farmhand, coal miner, or shepherd. In 1850, at the age of 29, Guerrero served as the farmer for Antonia Barros de Gaida, a widow from Vitoria. Soon after, they became a couple and were married. The couple went on to have five children, of whom, only three survived. The marriage would end in 1863 when Antonia died. Not too long after, Guerrero married again to Juana Salazar, though this marriage was turbulent and full of conflict. Guerrero's eldest son left to serve in another house, and the other two boys would early stay at home due to the bickering with Salazar. In 1870, Juana Salazar died from smallpox, and Juan Guerrero would commit his first murder shortly after. In 1871, Juan D. Osda Guerrero was married to his third wife, this one would yet again be turbulent. She was an alcoholic who died in 1876, after only five years of marriage. Not one to rest on his laurels, one month later Guerrero married his fourth and final wife, an old widow named Juana Ibazate. Although all of the relationships appear to be unstable and disorderly, Guerrero has never been implicated in any of his wife's deaths. When he was asked about the suspicious death of his third wife, he replied, No, I do not kill her, because if I had I would have declared it, as I have done with the others. On the afternoon of April 2, 1870, Guerrero would carry out his first murder. His victim was a local woman to Victoria who had turned to prostitution while her husband was in prison. Guerrero had agreed to hire the woman for her services and the two walked out of the city, taking the road to Navarre. They then stopped by a stream and had sex, after which, Guerrero offered the woman three Spanish reels as payment. Finding the price a little short, the woman protested and an argument broke out, at which point, Guerrero threw her to the floor and throttled her unconscious. He then dragged his victim to the stream and held her head in it until she had drowned. Removing her clothing and placing the woman face up post-mortem. After admiring his handiwork for a while, Guerrero covered the body in clothes and then made his way home. The murder was discovered the next day, but it was soon forgotten as there was no evidence to give investigators any direction. Guerrero's second murder wasn't until nearly a year later. On March 12, 1871, Guerrero had come across a poor widow who was begging on the streets of Portal del Rey, and asked her to come with him. After hearing she was hungry he gave the woman one reel, with which she bought wine and bread in a local inn, then the pair set off on the road to Navarre. After a while the two of them stopped to have sex, just 400 meters from Guerrero's last murder site. After they had consummated their agreement, Guerrero again offered a sum that was short of the going rate for such services, again there was an argument, and yet again Guerrero throttled the woman with his bare hands. Shortly afterwards, he returned home. His victim was found the next day, but once again there was no evidence for investigation. On August 21, 1872, Guerrero met a 13-year-old servant girl walking in the opposite direction as he was traveling to Gumri Mayor. After talking, he found out she had been sent on an errand to Vitoria by her employers. She was not a prostitute. Guerrero was not to be deterred however and he grabbed the girl and dragged her off the roadside, before strangling her unconscious and raping her. 
Once Guerrero had finished his carnal act, he then ended the girl's life by strangling her again, before leaving the body in a ditch. The victim was discovered the next day and the people of Victoria demanded some answers. In reply, investigations were doubled, though there was still little evidence for authorities to go on. At dusk on August 29, just eight days later, Guerrero approached a 23-year-old woman not far from his home and offered her money for sex. This time he took a different route, and the two left by the Portal de Barreras along the road to La Raja. Slightly apprehensive, Guerrero walked a little distance behind the woman to prevent people from seeing them together. Further down the road the pair reunited and after a while, they had sex next to a bridge. Guerrero offered her two reels as payment for her services, and after the usual rigmarole of protestation, he took her to ground and strangled her until she appeared to be lifeless. The victim wasn't quite dead however, she'd witched. In an unnerving act, Guerrero then took a hairpin from her unconscious body, straightened it, and stabbed her in the heart while holding her under his knees. He then dragged the body next to the river and traveled back home during the night. After the discovery of this victim, panic among the population increased, with many women refusing to go outside alone and villages becoming deserted at night. There was a monster in their midst and the town couldn't sleep until it was captured. A full year later in August of 1873, Guerrero took another prostitute to the stream where he had murdered his first two victims. Adhering to his usual method, he offered mediocre payment for her actions, she protested, and Guerrero attempted to strangle her. This time things worked out differently though. The woman managed to scream and be heard by guards from the nearby Pavrin Viejo prison, thus forcing Guerrero to scop her. Not only was the prison influential in stopping this crime, it would also have significance for Guerrero in the future. Nearly another year later and it was June of 1874. As Guerrero walked along the road of La Zumacra, he came across a destitute woman begging by its side. Unable to control his impulses, Guerrero attacked the woman instantly and attempted to strangle her. He would be unsuccessful again however, as the woman screamed and defended herself until two other women arrived and the murderer ran away. In this incident, the victim positively identified Guerrero and said that he was drunk and had tried to kill her for no reason, but nobody informed the police. A terrible oversight in hindsight. And it is true that many incidences of violence against beggars are unreported to this day. After this unsuccessful attempt made it two in a row, Juan D. Oz de Guerrero went quiet for four years. In 1878 on November 1, Juan Guerrero approached a mill just outside Vitoria and found the female miller to be working alone. At first he conversed normally with the woman before losing his inhibitions and attempting to strangle her. Again he was fought off and had to flee the scene. Guerrero was arrested for this offense and served two months in prison. On August 25, 1879, Guerrero left Victoria and headed along the road to Castile. On his route he found an old beggar woman and offered her some alms. He then pushed her off the road, where she fell and hurt her head on a rock. However, when Guerrero jumped over her to continue his assault, she kicked him in the stomach and he fell backwards. The woman got up quickly and ran to Vittoria screaming and shouting. When Guerrero arrived in Vittoria a little behind the woman, he asked his fourth wife to speak with her and reach an agreement that would keep him out of jail. Eventually she would agree, but until the woman was successfully bribed. Guerrero left the city and looked for work in the Simrostro Mines, in Biscay. Just under two weeks later on September 7, Guerrero latched on to 25-year-old Maria Dolores Cortazar, who was on the way back to Vitoria from Zaitki. As they walked, they happened upon a mail service employee who greeted the pair as they went about their business. Once he was sure that no one else was around, Guerrero pushed his female companion off the road and tied her handkerchief around her neck, 
asking for sex and promising discretion and money in return. Maria kept resisting however, and Guerrero stabbed her multiple times in the chest with a razor. He then raped her and stabbed her in the belly repeatedly until she died. The killer had now changed his method and that usually, is a sign of desperation or escalation. Guerrero then hid the body and took a detour through the mountains, where he was seen by a farmer who was looking for his cow. Guerrero continued before drinking in a roadside inn and sleeping under a bridge on the Zadora River. Waking up at dawn, Guerrero had breakfast in an inn of Arriaga, and from there he decided to climb the hill of Raga. Upon his journey, he happened upon a 52-year-old farmer woman from Navarrete, Manuela Otacana. Manuela had come to Vitoria for a festival and was going back home with some food she had bought. The two conversed until it began to rain and the pair sought refuge beneath a tree. While they took shelter, Guerrero seized Manuela and strangled her with her own apron. He then took off all her clothes, but found himself unable to perform sexually. This inevitably frustrated Guerrero and he stabbed her in the heart and belly using the same razor that he had used in the previous crime. He then proceeded to slice the belly open and extract the intestines and a kidney, before cleaning the blood from his hands with the victim's clothing and covering the body. When he was finished with his grisly actions, he ate the food in her basket and slept again under the same bridge. In the morning, he threw the razor in the river. The bodies of his two latest victims, were discovered that day, with two bodies now showing up at the same time and the added viciousness of the assaults, a much larger investigation was launched to find the killer. Evidence was found almost immediately, when the male employee who had seen Barreo and Maria came forward. When agents followed up this lead, they also discovered that the perpetrator had frequented an inn and was in conversation with the farmer who had lost his cow. This allowed them to come up with a detailed description of their suspect, which they sent to authorities in Vitoria. Once the description landed in Vitoria, an officer named Pinedo immediately recognized the description as Guerrero. This was due to his recent arrest and imprisonment, for the attack on the miller. Pinedo also learned of Guerrero's unsuccessful attack in August, in which he had attacked the beggar woman and asked his wife to bribe her. With all the evidence in hand, the net was closing in fast around Guerrero. The officer then received an arrest warrant for his suspect and took it to Guerrero's home, where Guerrero's wife said that he had left after the incident with the old woman, and that she had not seen him since. This was a lie however, as she had seen him when he came to change his clothes on September the 9th. Guerrero's arrest came when he decided to return to Vitoria on September the 21st, 1879. He was spotted in the street by Pinedo himself and immediately taken to the local jail for questioning. While in custody, Guerrero would deny all knowledge of the crimes initially. Eventually however, the warden and his guard managed to appeal to Guerrero's religious side and through his need to be forgiven of his sins. Due to these convictions, Guerrero began to confess his crimes to his captors. On November the 11th, 1879, Juan Díaz de Guerrero was sentenced to two death penalties. He was also ordered to compensate the last two victims' families monetarily. Guerrero's lawyers appealed the conviction under the pretense that he was actually unfit for trial, due to insanity. On March 3, 1880, Eleven different doctors stated that Guerrero was not insane, and that he had committed the crimes with clear thought. A second appeal was made, where directors of mental hospitals in Madrid and Toledo were asked about Guerrero's condition. On the 24th of May, they stated that Guerrero was an imbecile and he would have committed the crimes under the influence of a partial madness or intermittent monomania, amidst long intervals of lucidity. However, the Supreme Court disregarded this appeal and maintained the death sentences. Juan D. de Guerrero was garroted at the Pavrin Viejo prison of Vitoria on May 11, 1881. 
This was the same prison from where guards had come to save one of his victims. After his death, Guerrero's body was exposed publicly for 10 hours and buried at an unmarked grave. His head however, is believed to have been separated during the autopsy and sold to a medical collection in Madrid, though it is now considered lost.